Welcome to All My Art and Soul. And this is going to be a 30-day art journaling practice, which is not a challenge, but an invitation to find a new positive path to ourselves, to our creativity. If you open yourself up so that art and soul journaling can be a source of renewed inspiration, stillness, clarity, peace, and even wisdom. Over the next 30 days, I will be uploading a daily affirmation video. So come and join me for 30 days of art and soul journaling. And we are back for another affirmation art journaling page number 29. The only person I compare myself to is who I was yesterday. I am on my own unique journey and so are they. This is one thing uh, that I um, have been focusing on in order to not compare myself or my art to others, and we all know what I'm talking about. Oh, they're doing this, and oh, wow, you know what? There's so much art out there. There's so many artists out there now because of YouTube and social media. We have access. So it's important to remember that we're on our journey. We're all on our journey to get together as artists, creatives, but we're on our own individual journey. So, um, and some people might be a few stages ahead, uh, behind. It doesn't matter. It's just that we're all creatives and we're all on a similar but our own journey. So, I thought I would add that other little piece. I am on my own unique journey and so are they. And that's one thing that I keep reminding myself when I because I do uh, start comparing myself or my art. And um, this page I so enjoyed uh, because I wanted to try again. And, And it's funny how these things, maybe when I'm viewing other art or when I'm looking at, you know, the previous affirmation art pages that I created, I really loved that one Uh, with the red and the neutral. Uh, It was a cadmium, uh, let's see, I didn't even mention the colors, did I? Cadmium red deep hue, yellow oxide, parchment, cadmium orange hue, raw umber, Mars black, and of course the the two, I just used the transparent white this time, but whatever white you have is great, you know? So, and I just really wanted to have in this series, because I will be experimenting with these colors in other, in other ways, uh, the red with the neutral, but the warm red, not the, not the Quinn magenta red. And, um, so I remembered, I just went in my drawer because remember that, I don't know if you caught that little video when everything was all sparkly clean, at least organized much better. And I organized all my collage papers into colors. So I have them all in a Ziploc so I can just go to the drawer and go, oh yeah, there's the red. And then in it is, you know, all sorts of different reds, but at least that's my system. So it's really good to have a system. And I love the neutral with red and black, maybe a little white, but mostly the very light, light, unbleached titanium. So then how do we start this page? What am I thinking about? I'm thinking about the color fields, you know, the areas, uh, the horizontal bars or stripes or whatever you want to call them. And then you'll notice that I go, okay, what did I do? So then I lift up this, lift up the journal here and peek back onto that, um, onto that page. And, and, And I was laughing while I was doing it because I was thinking of the view, you viewers saying, what is she doing? (laughs) So anyway, you know, it's, it's, it's funny. 
It's funny. I guess only artists get get this humor, but you know. So I thought, oh man, what's the, I don't know if this is gonna work. So, but I know I wanted the dark on the bottom. Um, and if I do ever put a little, put dark on the top, it's either going to be a ton, mostly dark, or a very thin line. So this is okay, because I keep telling myself, I don't know about this color. Now, alizarin crimson is another one that you could use, but I don't think it's too cool. The, the warmer, the better, especially to go with the ochres or the yellow oxide. And then I just keep mixing right there on the page. Um, I've not gone so far as to pre-plan because that's what this series is about too, is playing with color and just seeing what happens. Making notes, meaning in your mind or taking notes, you have the journals there um, at, you know, to look at and going, oh, so now you have, if you or I have, 30 more pages of color combinations that I love, want to go further with, um, etc. So I'm really loving uh, the thing that I'm really loving on this one page. I'm looking at it right next, right in front of me while I'm talking about the creation of it, which is so cool. Uh, the old books that I just found at my bookstore. Oh, I must go there. So I found some old sheet music. I'm really looking at the age of the paper, the, uh, you know, thinking of everything as a as a collage piece, and of course the notes, uh, the lyrics of the music too. I consider, um, and, and all of that. And I didn't, I didn't want a, you know, you just have a feeling, right? So I have that. I found some more books down the, the basement, and I will be showing those and how I'm going to use them and what I'm going to use them for in our next series of the, what is it? Life of Three Paint, The Journey of Three Paintings, that's the one. Okay, so here is the collage piece that uh, I'm finding the pattern. There's usually a piece of collage that inspires my color palette, most of the time. Sometimes it'll go the other way. Um, and that sewing page, and I totally did, I don't remember making that piece. I guess there was some leftover um, um, paint on the jelly plate printer, and that's what I did. So then I'm remembering, okay, um, if I want it more yellow, use less of the unbleached titanium or parchment and use more white with the uh, yellow oxide or the Naples yellow. If you if you have Naples and you don't have the other, that will work really great. Um, it's not as saturated, but it would really work in this color combination. So then I'm thinking the wheat. Like every time I do a bar of that yellow, I think of, of the grass or a wheat field and I just, oh, I just love it. And then I don't want blue, of course. So I'm not doing blue. And I wanted a very large natural um, area that I'm going to play with, with blacks and just a tiny, tiny bit and just a tiny bit of uh, line and a very translucent, interesting piece. And what was it? Uh, nope, it was the deli paper. And the deli paper I got, uh, again, for those who may have missed, is from Amazon. Uh, it's 50 sheets and it's unwaxed especially for acrylic paint. And just trying to, I don't know why I'm fidgety here. I'm just trying to get, um, oh, I see, more of a contrast. And then um, it dries a little darker and it evens out. And then I, and I change those sections. So what I'm liking about composition right now, because that's I'm finding that's where I'm going right now. I'm ready for it. So using these uh, color fields and then dividing them up, but still maintaining uh, the similar value as to not, um, not into, you know, add more interest. 
I, I guess, yes, the composition will change, but the big, um, the main composition would be in horizontal. And then just changing up some of the areas with similar values um, vertically. And that's where you can come in with collage. So if you're, if you're brand new here, that's a great way to just to start using collage. You can use high contrast. I prefer, notice, see the red? I have the reds within the reds. And then that, then I bring down that, uh, see that would have worked in several spots because once you, see that would have worked really cool. Whole different page, but I've got to keep that in mind. And that's the deli paper. It's, uh, I don't think that's the deli paper. It's so thin. That might be the rice paper that I ordered. Anyway, um, I just use a very light, light uh, brush and acrylic because it's so delicate. And there's that piece that I brought down. And I'm liking it because it has the neutral, it has a black pattern, uh, symmetrical, and I end up covering almost half of it anyway with some other papers but are still within the similar value of the ochre uh, the middle section and that's what I'm thinking not right away and so this isn't really fair because this is in hindsight uh, but I'm just trying to uh, uh, say in the order of my uh, of the process that I was going through and I'm really liking the texture um, there I am peeking see there's that one there I just love that page I think the best part of that page is that middle part and how uh, the section is then subdivided into three sections and yet it stays intact it's so cool and then I'll have to look again because I forget I don't know, is my short memory going? I'm not sure. Anyway, so then that's okay, but that's all right, because I find this other really cool piece of collage and go horizontally over it. And it is the parchment tracing paper with some, just some small little dots on it. It's very transparent. And I figure this is the perfect spot for this piece because then we're sort of eliminating and I really should have or could have cropped off that piece where it, so it stopped in the in and stayed within the red but this really helps and then creates a really neat shadow underneath I love sewing patterns have to find some more oh there I go looking again oh yeah okay so then once I get something in my mind and I'm going okay I need to stop looking because I don't want to copy it I'm, I'm ruining the flow and I want this to develop intuitively right so yeah that would have looked cool too oh there were so many choices so many and then I and I finally figured out why this particular stream writing that big piece that goes across it's the scale very large chunky writing on such a small painting but it would be perfect for a very large painting so I have to you have to sort of I have to remember that and this yes I liked it it's okay but I've done you know that I've done this so many times so I sort of force myself not to do that uh, there comes the China marker I put it there because I like how you can see line underneath and I didn't want it empty and I chose vertical I mean uh, horizontal line because of the piece next to it and now it has some continuity going across and then realize that you know what no 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 I'm gonna lighten this piece up too much water on my brush that's what happens and then you can just let it dry and then add another coat or use the hair dryer. It depends. And I'm trying to see, I'm trying to um, uh, maintain that value of that whole section. 
and then I get a little too light or desaturated. And I didn't want them meeting up exactly, but I put a really cool piece of collage above that sewing pattern piece. And that's a little thin there, so then I go, oh yeah, there we go. And then some more horizontal lines, and I end up making a nice stripe pattern. And there I go, peeking again. Have to find it. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Where did it go? <laughs> there it is. Okay, okay, all right. That's what I'm doing. So I couldn't, yeah. And, oh yeah. So that's okay. It just needs something at the bottom. So it needs some pattern. And I love these dots. I need to find some more organic dots. And black, of course, because it is balancing out the black pattern on the left. So now this red is sort of subdivided into three. There's lots of interesting things. So you have the big conversation and the small, con or the quiet conversation. Yeah, big, quiet, should be big, small, loud conversation, which is your your overall general composition. And then you can go and see, that's just not working, just too loud, too loud. Quieter, thinner, and the stripes, I thought, man, they gotta fit somewhere, but they don't. It's just too, no, too busy, too busy, too, too much pattern at this point. So now I need some quiet things. And you notice right away, no, I almost put it in. But no, 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 no. It just, there we go. Okay, and right away, so I was going to put it there. And then I decided to, no, we'll just put some, uh, so that's the raw umber and red and black at the bottom. And what I love is when I scored through because the Mars is black, the heavy body, uh, when it's almost dry, when you wait until it's almost dry, when you score through it, it's way better. When there's something light underneath, and that's a little thing to remember. What color to put under there if you're gonna put another layer. See, all these things are building up in our repertoire of marks and pattern. So yeah, I just needed that little thin line needed some saturation but not not a big wide one and then I thought okay how can I bring the eye down so I added some ochre and it really does work and I love how it's going over some of those dots and no not even a little piece of that is working isn't that interesting it has all the right tones it has black uh, neutral but it just doesn't work. This is a scrap piece. And it's the most beautiful raw umber and black. I think just those two colors make the most beautiful brown. Yeah, so I just wanted to, and now when I'm looking at it, it, it looks too much like an anchor or something. So what I will do is just, just lessen the contrast I'll probably put a neutral, maybe more of the red, just so the big white flashlighty mark, your eye isn't staying on there. But it's an interesting mark. So I'm loving this handcrafted paper. It's all speckly. I'm slowly running out. But they come in really big sheets. And I forget the measure, the 24, I think 18 by 24. And um, this is another piece made from the same set of colors, um, but on the jelly plate printer. And it was the red and the ochre. And I just let it, um, let the paint sort of halfway mix with my brayer and it's okay but now there's too much of a difference between the lower part and the upper part where 
The ochre or the yellow oxide and unbleached titanium or parchment is creating a much better transition or gradation, moving the eye upward. And then you've got this, oh. So I try to fit it in, the color is perfect. That piece doesn't do it, because the other one's a little lighter. And then I didn't want to do the same, oh, excuse me. I didn't want to do the same thing again. So I thought, okay, maybe I can su subtly subdivide that upper section and there's that piece it does end up going there I just I just through trial and error have to find my way and there's that interesting piece so wonderful pattern but it's so subtle and notice I'm picking up the same line where the sewing pattern end ended and I do end up putting a much lighter piece those black circles on the neutral, but not across, just in that section. And knowing that I love line underneath, and this looks so cool. So it's using the same value, but just making this section much more interesting. Yes, and this was the might have been the parchment. That's why it's wrinkling, but now after it's dried a while, all the wrinkles have sort of flattened and gone out of it. it sort of created a really interesting texture, but I so love that you can see the, the marks underneath the previous layer. So I'm really playing on that. And then the speckly paper thing, I try, it just, it looks, two eyes or something. It just doesn't cut it. But the color is so beautiful. Or the lack of color. So this, so I finally figured out, no, it needs to go here. And now what's happening is I'm emphasizing, yes, that vertical area. So I've got a vertical, horizontal, and now it's sort of slightly changed, but the eye can go either way because I leave the change in the upper area there, just, just like it is. So it's extremely subtle, and it even becomes more subtle the more I emphasize the lower one with these orange lines, the brown line, making some stripes, and emphasizing the horizontal pattern. This, this journey, or this series, has been totally amazing. Uh, for me, in that I'm just, my, my uh, reactions, my instincts, my intuition, I'm learning more just by doing more and building my repertoire of just my marks, my layers, different kinds of layers. And if you, um, if you find that the same thing has been happening to you when you... Uh, because every single day, and I haven't missed a day, I have not done that before. This is the first time, and I've wanted to do a 30-day challenge of some kind. And uh, this has been amazing. So please leave a comment. Uh, let me know how you've enjoyed this. Um, what would you like to do it again? Of course, I'm not going to do it the same way. We're going to do it in another way. Just give some feedback and share. And don't forget to share this video. Share it with a friend. Like, subscribe. And um, all of these pages, because I'm right in the middle of it now, are going to be um, offered in my shop. Um, on The abstract patterns are going to be on all over print, print on demand. Uh, wonderful um, items gift ideas. Ooh, there goes the three dots. So I love threes. There's lots of, there's huge symbolism in threes. And I really liked how I carried up that ochre to the top rather than using black. So I'm liking that I'm paying attention that we're present. Then of course, my little vertical lines 
And of course you know we have to finish off with the sprinkle of black. And there goes those. It's perfect there because now I need some more light to carry the light from the top down. And there I'm just, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. No, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. It sort of works there. But the circles work better because they're lighter. Oh, they're perfect. And of course, I, um, what did I call it? It's not, it's, it's not staining. Anyway, uh, you could call it staining. Uh, I know it isn't. It just that, it just eludes me right now. It's a very thin, thin layer of acrylic, of a lot of water, and, you, and I just turn, change the hue of that paper to just warmed it up. Okay. And loving that row of numbers that was a uh, an index, uh, not an index, a table of contents from one of the old books. And here comes the splash. And it's just so subtle. It just, uh, just because of that speckly paper, it sort of influenced my, it's like, oh man, I wish I had that feeling. So I'm just going to do that. And it just, notice, it was just a little naked. It needed something. And I love my um, alignment. So that was the piece. So it has a little speck of red in it, which now brings the red from the bottom up. All balance, balancing. So think threes. It doesn't have to be exact, but two isn't going to do it. Three. And at first, I didn't line it up perfectly and now it is so it's just enough, and I could even lighten it up but I don't think it needs it and now I'm trying those color those crayons they have such fabulous colors but they're so hard they don't they don't do anything just on paper so yeah I just made that swoosh of a line I think that added some energy and of course my nine dots of orange and it, see how it filled that area Oh, so am I done? Oh no, I am. I let it, I let it be this time. There might be some, you know, some gluing down of some edges. Um, yeah, that one right there, it just lifted. And that's typical for this uh, parchment tracing paper. It's pretty tough stuff, but it's so transparent. I love the layering effect. So this is it. Uh, one more tomorrow. Um, what a wonderful journey it has been. So please remember to uh, leave a comment. Let me know how you, have, how you have enjoyed this series. I know a lot of people just like watching because it's peaceful and you get lots of ideas. And I hope I've helped people just by, you know, sh sharing what I'm doing. Uh, you're on the journey with me. You know, and I'm just turning around and helping people who are behind or I don't even like using that word, but back there coming forward. And that's what we do. And um, I can't wait to take what I've learned to my new work. So. So if not, if you haven't already, uh, please uh, check out the Facebook group. We are well over 400 members right now, and I will be getting back to Studio Sundays. Uh, not this Sunday. I will be showing a flip through. Uh, maybe it'll be a short one. Um, and one of these days soon, I've got to do a Facebook Live and, of course, have some Q&As, maybe share what, uh, what we're liking after the 30 days. And this is it. So um, I hope you enjoyed episode 29, and I will see you in the next video tomorrow.